Okay, so hi, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Ekaterina Moraru and I'm an interaction designer for Xwiki. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, open source uh, design feedback and um, uh, it's going to be a panel mostly and um, these are my colleagues from the <laughs> open source design community and um, uh, I want it to be a very interactive session but because we have only 25 minutes and uh, 20 to 25 minutes and the topic is very very broad I will encourage also the audience to participate so if you want to participate to the questions that are being asked because uh, I don't know maybe we'll not have time to ask everybody you can uh, use the QR codes and the survey is there and we can see also uh, what you think about about the topics well, and the first question are uh, who do you represent so that that will be an easy question for you like if you are designers or developers or other things and uh, I will also start when you introduce yourself and I will ask the panel members to uh, say their names and the community they're uh, they're uh, <laughs> representing so Bernard you want to so start? hello I'm Bernard the guy from just before um, I'm part of the open source design um, community um, I'm a uh, user researcher and interaction designer, um, and I'm trying to sort of get more involved in more open source projects. That's me. I'm Jan, and you probably already know that I'm, yeah, from the previous talk that I uh, am at Mixcloud, uh, and I'm mainly interaction designer, uh, and yeah, I'm also active in open source design and uh, a few other open source projects. Hi, uh, I'm Elio, I'm a visual designer. Um, yeah, let's go a bit closer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a visual designer, mostly doing stuff for uh, Mozilla and Tor project, and I'm representing URA, where we help many other open source projects with design. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria. I'm an engineer with an interest in usability. Uh, I represent First Asia Open Source Design, and I try to work on Valentina project. participated to the survey. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have five designers and five developers. That's, uh, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> this means that it's very equilibrated uh, talk. Bon, so the first question that uh, I will ask the panel, it's uh, what do they think uh, that uh, understanding the designer motivations improves the feedback? And what I mean by that, the audience will need to discuss and to say what do they think motivates a designer to participate in the open source? And uh, some example of um, options are money, fame, or uh, sharing experience or not. And um, for you guys, do you think it's important when you provide design feedback to understand why the designer is contributing, or uh, you want to keep it professional, it doesn't matter? Hard question. Anyone? <laughs> So, so do you think that if you know that uh, a designer wants money in open source, you should treat it different? Or if you know that it's uh, his, uh, I don't know, doing this pro bono, you should maybe uh, be more uh, polite to him? Or is it changed the approach uh, for communities when... Uh, I have an opinion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I think that design contribution is no different from any other contribution to open source. And it's very important to play by the rules of the community. So uh, if you are wanted to be a part of, contrib uh, of the open source project, you need to explain how you came to this decision. And it's a dif dif difficult uh, topic usually. So uh, in UX design especially, the most important uh, process is explain the journey, why you make these decisions, and then you have a chance to succeed and make your contribution accepted. Uh, I wanted to add something about that as well. Um, so when an open source project is born, there is probably there is a need for something new, and the founders of that project understand the importance very, very clearly. So one of the problems which comes up when a designer comes into the game is that the communication of the importance of the mission of all, the whole thing, why the people are doing this, is not translated well to the designer. So this is why there might be a lot of technical contributors because they understand the need for the project while designers might lack that understanding. And I think there is a gap between the communication, between um, the technical uh, leads of the project and designers because it's like, 
it's like telling you why I love that particular kind of coffee. It's like no one will understand that unless you explain them because the coffee beans are roasted in that way and it's because it's fair trade, blah, blah, blah. If you talk in that process, like you can, you can, ah, that's why you like that so much. Okay, I understand why this is so important to you. And if you are doing, especially if you are doing this pro bono, this is something a designer needs, I think. There's something uh, the audience uh, said that uh, uh, designers are motivated to to gain experience and to share experience and not, are not really motivated by money and fame. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, I I, I would agree. So I, I also wanted to say something like touching on, on what Victoria said. I think um, it's like because design or we we. We shouldn't treat design as art, of course, because it's quantifiable and it's basically any designer, w whatever uh, they do, like if they do it full time or if they do it pro bono or, or if they're just a volunteer, they're just kind of a voice for uh, for the user, basically, or for whoever is using it in the end. So um, usability is quantifiable, so it, it doesn't really matter in what uh, capacity you contribute to the project. So um, it's like you're just a, a channel for better usability for making better uh, better uh, design happen so um, yeah that's uh, that shouldn't be part of like who you are or why you, um, yeah, why you contribute that. to the project yeah. okay. um, the next question for audience is who is the target in open source project and the options are the owners the designers the users and the world and um, this is an interesting question so the panel should ask how understanding the panel improves the feedback the community gives one example I could give is that uh, when a committer uh, looks at the design thing, he doesn't think about his users, he's just providing subjective feedback. Uh, so wh who is the target in open source and uh, how is that important and, and how, is, how does that influence? Um, well, I think the first question, who's, who's the... Target. The target? Well, target, I mean... Uh, target audience. A target audience of your of your project of your open source project, and how understanding that helps you provide better feedback. So, uh, I think <laughs> it's probably the world. I mean, and the world contains the users uh, and everybody else. Okay, um, so for example, what do you think about designers that consider themselves to be expert in a certain domain? Should the the designer be the considered the 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 one that provides the most important feedback? No, it should also be the user. Well, it should be the users ultimately, and, and the designer is the voice of the user. The, the contributors who write code are also possibly the, probably the users, possibly. So you have to take into account everybody's um, um, feedback. Um, I mean, I, I just think it's important that it's we don't see like or we don't say the target audience is everyone because then we, we don't have particular focus, right? So we have to we have to first focus on like a specific group and then maybe um, maybe maybe specifically cut that up into into uh, different groups of of target audiences. So um, yeah, I definitely don't think it's the world because like I don't know, uh, not like only half of the world is using the internet or something. So, um, for example, that, right? Like, so it's definitely not the world. Yes, um, and, uh, um, yeah. Uh, people said the world, and I don't know, about uh, 14 said uh, users. Yeah, the options are a bit uh, blurry, so, yeah. <laughs> Order. <laughs> for example, when you say the world, you could say that when you do a design feedback or a proposal, you can put it on Twitter for everybody to see it. And that could be considered the world. Either you just show them to your community. I'm not sure if it's on, on topic that I just wanted to add. It's easy to say for whom we build software, for users, but it's very difficult to follow this. And we sometimes assume, oh, I'm the user, I know everything. So uh, if you build a project, just go out and see people use your product. That's the only w one way we can learn. So uh, the users, whoever you see using your project, and uh, then you learn and improve. So. Very hard to to make it very specific because if it's the world, you are not surely who you're targeted. Are they uh, advanced users? Are they normal users? Are they from a specific geographic region? And this might be or not important when when you propose something. Well, uh, the next question.
question we have is who makes the final decision? And this is one of the important things, and this should be at least clarified from the start. Um, so options for the audience are owners, designers, users, and the world. So they're, they're the same options from, uh, from before. So uh, I, I have some personal experience with that, I, I guess. I think I mentioned that before. So um, w when someone asks you uh, for, uh, for contribution, it's hard to understand who makes the final decision. And uh, doing that in the beginning right in front can um, avoid a lot of misunderstandings in the, in the later. Because sometimes people want to work in the open, doing um, requests on open source design but they want to have the final decision. So if you are an open source project, you are the founder of the project, you want to create it, you want to have the process in the open, but you want to have the final decision in the end. So, okay, I can understand that, but that would be great if you can say that. Um, sometimes you want the community to have the decision. So um, this creates, uh, this can avoid quite a lot of conflicts if it's in the brief, if, because open source design is quite niche yet. It's nice to have a clear communication and. Oh, wow. So we have, uh, I don't know, 14 people that say owners and committers. But, uh, but designers are not committers? So I believe that community have to de decide always, and community will balance itself and uh, oh, please, please give your opinion. So I think it's uh, those wh who make the software uh, and those are committers and designers all together, and they have they uh, as a community make decisions. We cannot separate it. Thanks. Uh, I think, like in many cases, it 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 will ideally become a discussion be between all of these groups. I suppose that like only one of them, only one person is responsible, would be sort of very classic management and I th hope that in our projects uh, we can have a discussion together and make sense of it together. No, a combination of everybody. Uh, sorry, uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, design by committee is, some, uh, is a way for things to go certainly wrong. So, uh, there is, I think that there is a, um, one reason that you might uh, decide that, okay, after all the discussion, if you haven't reached some kind of consensus, somebody has to make a final de hard decision. And in my opinion, that should be the designer. The designer. Okay. And since you said that, um, I would expect uh, if there was a design made, there was some research or some testing done with users, and I would look for the data. And if there was no data, then it, it's more difficult. But if you've done usability testing with X number of people, here's data, there's no data, this is the, the default, would be my... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to make a decision without any, like if it's just opinion against opinion, or if we treat design as an opinion. So yeah, again, research basically trumps uh, the, the, these, these factors, like uh, objective factors. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, think it's important not to um, uh, think of design as an opinion, because, I mean, you, you go to school, you learn a profession, and uh, that, I mean, you can't always have uh, statistical data saying it's a good design. It is a profession, and uh, yeah. Anyone else? The next question is, how does time influence the feedback process? So something very problematic I've seen is bike shedding, like people talking about, um, maybe that color should be a bit more purplish or something, but because I like purple. Um, so that's not the right thing to approach things. And 
bike sharing generally um, takes a lot of time and is a waste of time. Um, as again, as I, oh sorry, yeah, hey camera. <laughs> uh, as again, as I said, depends really on the uh, who makes takes the decision. So takes it depends on the question before. So the bigger the community or decision making committee is, the longer it takes. So if it's only one uh, decision maker, it obviously takes much less time, but it's less transparent. So it's a compromise always. Uh, one thing to know is that in open source uh, design process f and feedback can take like a couple of months so even in our community we've seen proposals that didn't receive for I don't know five months responses etc and for designers can be very hard to uh, go back in that mindset and remember what they did there and create another iteration um, so yeah but oftentimes this the time also helps to rethink and and g like get out of the maybe the the, the um, thing you were stuck in back then. So you you can get removed from like your your baby that you created as a designer and you're so attached to and uh, uh, yeah you you get detached a bit and you can think about it more clearly again. So. And and another thing that is very important when you request design work, uh, it's to also mention uh, how much time that designer has to work or not. Because, for example, uh, when requesting th things for free, uh, there might not be an urgency. And uh, if you want something very fast, at least um, tell that designer that, uh, I don't know, that, uh, okay, it's free and it's fine, but you need it urgent or, or not. No? Okay. Well, you want to say? Uh, yeah. What what would be great sometimes? Like, often people seem to be unsure what they what they need, and that's like super valid if you don't know how to approach a design problem. If you're not a designer yourself, uh, and in that case, I think it would help for example uh, communities like like ours a lot of people would be just frank about it and say i would like to have that improved but i don't know know why so please first help me to to make a good decision about that i think that's really important because uh design isn't just about going away and doing something in a in a in your tower and coming back and saying here it is it's also talking with the people who have asked you, and if they don't know what they need, then it's your job to go back to the start and say, okay, what is it that you're looking for? And let's talk in the simplest of language. Uh, b and then you, you get to the point where you've got a better understanding of the, the, the design thing that you're trying to do. Okay, now I understand. And it'll save pain and hurt. <laughs> make a summary of the things we discussed and it was if you were to pick one of the factors that it's the most important in the design process which one would be uh, and the options were uh, knowing who is the decision maker and or knowing uh, what is the motivation for designer or understanding the need knowing the target knowing time constraint or any other thing and currently for example, um, the most important factor from the other audience uh, they consider to be the need. So ad understanding first uh, the need when you do a design. So talking to people. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like of course I agree it's the need, but unfortunately, uh, some or most often the reality is that you actually don't have time to do usability <laughs> testing, especially in open source. So unfortunately, it ends up being. Um, just a whole bunch of opinions uh, of, of a whole bunch of people on your issue tracker. So I think that's actually yeah, a good uh, point that yeah, understanding the need is the most important point and doing usability testing or, or any kind of testing is uh, yeah, a very, very important thing in design as a whole, but especially in open source projects. <coughs> yeah, it's been mentioned before. It's imp I think it's the most important thing is that design, not to treat design as an opinion, because like uh, people look at it as a form of art, which it isn't. So, for example, you cannot say, I like red, so let's make the logo red, because you need to understand that red might be aggressive. It might, in some countries, it might have a different meaning. You might want to know that sans serif as font is different than serif font, because blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> you, you got to have arguments, I think. Um, I can understand if you don't have the background to 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 get that, but comments like "I love it" uh, or "I hate it" because meh, um, 
are kind of like unconstructive. So I think this kills the process of feedback. Yeah, plus one. <laughs> question and one of the most important is when should the feedback uh, the feedback process stops and uh, the audience uh, has options like uh, after uh, x number of votes or um, uh, <laughs> uh, I forgot <laughs> when, the committer decides. when the committer decides to when the designer decides to after a uh, number of iterations uh, uh, hmm. when the designer no, that's another. When someone cries. <laughs> someone <laughs> cries. <laughs> so the main question was, do you need to do like X iterations or do you need to wait like seven months or do you need to make the designer happy? Do you need to make the committers happy, the world or I don't know. I mean, if we talk about it on a broader scale, I think the feedback process never stops because software is ever changing and so that, but that also helps making the individual feedback processes stop because we say, okay, what's the best for like the next half year or, or what's the best for right now? And, and then we also have uh, uh, things for, for more future iterations. So I think, yeah, at the same time, it's, it's good to realize, yeah, this will change in the future maybe anyway. And five years ago, it looked much different. Uh, and uh, yeah, but, but that also helps for the immediate decision to say, this is going to change in the future, maybe anyway. But we can always so we can always revisit it. But for now, let's let's decide on something which works for now. Uh, so I see that the winner is when owners are happy. Yes. <laughs> are they ever happy? <laughs> 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 so I think that uh, it's very important to uh, th kind of know that there should be time for several iteration because the first result would never the be would be never the best one so when you plan uh, to design something just just ac accept the idea that it go should go through several iteration and even if you're not happy happy with the first one move on and st and iterate again so the process never stops because we improve software constantly and it never gets to the best point because everything is changing software has to change as well so process never stops um, I, I, I strongly disagree with this result, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I just want to do a comparison with that. Like, there's a reason there's a CTO, there's a reason there's a creative lead. So I imagine like a designer taking on the CTO position. Hey, I don't like this line of code. Like, please uh, do, don't do it like that. I, I don't like that. Um, so it's that equivalent of the owners not liking or liking the decision. So. If you have asked a designer to help you, what's the point of asking a designer when you're doing the decision yourself anyway, right? Do you just need a robot to implement the design for something which you have in mind? Because that's not how design works. So um, I, I think like everyone has their own skills and this should be respected, of course, in a more open and transparent way. So let's, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Just a final thought, because we're late. Um, so I, sorry, I completely disagree with this uh, <laughs> result as well. Um, the software is being developed, I presume, for users. Uh, the designer's opinion doesn't really matter. If the users are happy with the software and they're using it more and there are more users and everybody is happy, that's a win. That's my opinion. Thank you. Maybe we just didn't have the option when the users... Yeah, maybe there's no option. <laughs> Katarina was being <laughs> intentionally provocative. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Okay, so th thank you so much. We also have, uh, uh, please provide feedback for the sessions and uh, thank you so much for participating in this. Event.